One of the questions that I sometimes get from viewers of the channel is, hey DT, what BitTorrent client do you use? And to be honest, uh, I have used several of them in the past and they all work. I don't do a whole lot with BitTorrents. So pretty much any BitTorrent client works for me. Typically I just use whatever is installed by default on a Linux distribution. The one that seems to be the de facto standard on Linux is Transmission. Transmission is usually the one that's pre-installed on most Linux distributions. And if Transmission's there, I'll use it. Uh, Deluge is another popular free and open source BitTorrent client that's available on Linux. It's in pretty much everybody's repositories. Deluge is great. I've used it a lot in the past. And a lot of you guys, of course, expect me to use a terminal-based BitTorrent client. And I have used some terminal-based BitTorrent clients in the past. One that I've had a little experience with is RTorrent. And that's what I'm going to show you today. But let's just briefly take a look at the RTorrent GitHub. Uh, this is where they host their source code. Now, this is free and open source software, of course. It's licensed under the GPL. If I take a look at the source code, I'm not sure what this is written in. It is written in C++. So let me show you RTorrent in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the desktop here. And this is actually a VM of Ubuntu 20.04. And why am I not showing you RTorrent on my main production machine? It's because I have RTorrent on my main production machine, but it's a different version of RTorrent than the one that you're going to find in standard repositories. So I wanted to show you the default RTorrent before I show you the version of RTorrent that I use. So on Ubuntu, if I control alt T, it will bring up a terminal. And let me zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. On Debian or Ubuntu based systems, you would need to sudo apt install rtorrent and then give it your sudo password. I've already installed rtorrent, so I'll decline that. And once it's installed, you could just launch rtorrent. Uh, it's a very plain screen. Of course, when you first log in, nothing's going on. Control Q to quit out of rtorrent. Really, before you do anything with rtorrent, though, you need to have a configuration file and you need to set at least a few settings in that configuration file, really, before you ever get started. There is an example rtorrent.rc file on your system. It's not obvious where this thing is, but I found it in, if I cd into slash user slash share slash doc slash rtorrent slash examples if i do an ls you will see there is a file in there called rtorrent.rc.gz it's a, a sample config file it's compressed so you can't just copy this over to your home directory which is where the default config needs to be because if you just do a cp for copy you know this rtorrent.rc.gz file over to your home directory it's a compressed file. It's unreadable. It's just going to be gibberish. But what you can do, you can actually read this file, this compressed file, with Vim. Let me open this with sudo privileges because we are going to copy this over. I'll have to change the owner later, though. But if I open this with sudo vim rtorrent.rc.gz, you know, we can actually read it now inside Vim. And since I opened it with sudo, I have write privileges. So I'm going to colon w to write. And then I'm going to write this to slash home slash DT and then rename the file. It needs to be renamed to dot rtorrent. It's very important. Dot rtorrent dot rc. Write that and then we can quit out of the example. I can cd over into the home directory. And if I do a ls dash la for long format and a for all files and directories, including the dot files, you will see in this directory I have dot rtorrent dot rc. But look at the owner. The owner of that file is root. Um, so we actually don't have our home user on that file, so we need to change ownership. So sudo ch own and then dt colon dt. I'm going to change it to the dt user and the dt group dot rtorrent dot rc. And it didn't ask me for a sudo password because we had just entered it before when we did the sudo vim command. And now if I just open our .rtorrent.rc here in vim, this is the example config that we copied over. Now, there are a few things you need to set up really before you get started with rtorrent. If you page down, you will see that the default directory is actually set up to your home directory. That's not probably where you want that, so... So I'm going to uncomment this line, and for the directory default, I'm going to set that to my downloads directory. Then if you 
go a couple of lines down, you will see session path. Now this is very important. Let's uncomment that line. You need to set up a session directory. By, by default, that session directory is going to be in your home directory, and it's going to be in a directory called session. Or you could name these anything you want. You can actually you know change these settings if you really want to. But since that's the default, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder in my home directory called session. And we have our session directory created now. The session, what that is, is when you launch rtorrent and you start adding some torrents and it starts downloading stuff. Well, you close the terminal, so you close rtorrent, and later you come back to rtorrent, it remembers those torrents that you had. It remembers the downloads that were interrupted because you closed the program. If you don't have a session directory, then, you know, you add three or four torrents and it starts pulling all those down, but you close the terminal and it stops, of course, the downloads. When you go back, our torrent's going to be empty again. So it's very important that you do create this session directory. Next thing you want to do, just a couple of lines under that, you have this right here. It says schedule to, and it's talking about a watch directory. So I would uncomment that line. Now, watch directory is going to be a directory on the system where it searches for any file that ends in .torrent. So any .torrent files. And if they're in this watch directory, rtorrent is going to start downloading them. So it's really cool to have this. So once again, I'll open up our graphical file browser here. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to create one called watch in our home directory. Just because that's the default that they have here and, and I'm fine with that of course you, again you could change these to any path you want the only other thing I might add in the config is enable DHT support for trackerless torrents that sounds like a good idea so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncomment this line here DHT dot mode set equals auto and instead of auto we are going to change that to on so DHT mode set equals on and then I'm going to go down here and DHT port set. It's where we would set a specific port for DHT. By default, it's set to 6881. I'm good with that. You know what? I think we played with the config long enough. I'm going to write and quit. Let's launch rtorrent now. And this is rtorrent to add a torrent. Well, let's go grab one from the internet. So I'm going to launch Firefox. And I'm going to go to distrowatch.com. Let's go ahead and grab some Linux distributions via torrent. Maybe I want to grab the latest Ubuntu Budgie 2004. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the torrent link. I'm going to choose save link as. This is very important. Remember the watch directory? I'm going to go back into my home directory, into the watch directory, and I'm going to click save. And it just put Ubuntu Budgie2004.iso.torrent in the watch directory. Remember, any file that ends with .torrent in the watch directory, our torrent is going to be on the lookout for. So let me close out Firefox, and you see it's already downloading the file. Now, normally what you would do is there is a command. You can hit space or backspace uh, on the keyboard. And it's going to ask for the location of that .torrent file, either a URL or a location on your file system. And you can hit enter, and then you will get all of this information. But it makes it so much easier to have that watch directory set up. Because anytime you're in a browser and you see a torrent link, you just click save the link. And where do you save the link? You save it into your watch directory. And rtorrent automatically starts downloading it if rtorrent is open. If it's not open, then the next time you launch rtorrent, it will start downloading those files. I'm going to drag our torrent over here and let's go ahead and open up another terminal. I'll split the screen here. I will zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to run a man our torrent. The man page for our torrent gives you some of the basic commands. Uh, obviously, I've already told you control Q quits out of our torrent up, down, left, right is the navigation keys. If you wanted to use something other than the arrow keys, looks like they're using a more Emacs style key binding. So, so control P for previous, control N for next. So I'm assuming that's going up and down your lines, control B and control L for back and forwards. Uh, yeah, that's the navigation. It's the same as up, down, left, and right, except you know, instead you're doing control and then P, N, B, or F. 
Some of the other interesting commands here, one through seven on the keyboard changes the view. So if I just hit one on the keyboard, I guess this is the main view. If I hit two, this is the name view. Three is started. So I guess any torrents that have already started. Four, torrents that have stopped. Five, torrents that are complete. Six, torrents that are incomplete. And seven is hashing. I'm going to go back to one, which is the main view. I'm going to close rtorrent here. And I'm going to show you rtorrent on my main production machine. So this is my desktop here, and if I open up a terminal, and let me zoom in a little bit here, rtorrent on my system is not exactly rtorrent. My rtorrent is actually a program called rtorrent-ps. So if I go back to the browser, and once again, hosted on GitHub, there is a program called rtorrent-ps, and this is a distribution of rtorrent. That's very important. It's not a fork of rtorrent. It's not somebody taking rtorrent and going a, a completely different direction. It's just a distribution of rtorrent. So they've configured rtorrent in some pretty you know, specific ways. And what rtorrent.ps does is basically it gives rtorrent a little bling. It makes it a little sexier to look at in the terminal. If you want rtorrent-ps, and you happen to be on an Arch-based system, I believe it is in the AUR, you could yay dash capital S rtorrent dash PS. If I hit enter, let me make sure that's right, it is. I'm gonna decline the download though, I've already got it installed. And if I just launch rtorrent on my system, this is rtorrent dash PS. And I've already got some uh, torrents that I downloaded here, uh, some of the latest uh, various flavors of Ubuntu 2004. Anyway, you can see it's just like rtorrent. The only thing is they configured it a little bit. It's got a lot more colors, got a lot more Unicode characters, some colored emojis, especially because I, my system, the terminal emulator I'm using, which I believe this is ST. ST and Alacrity on my system are pretty good at rendering colored emojis. Some other Terminal emulators might not be so good. URXVT, I can tell you, is pretty terrible when it comes to handling a lot of these special glyphs and Unicode characters. One thing I should mention with rtorrent-ps is if you haven't researched a little bit, because everything is these colored emojis and Unicode glyphs, you may not be able to figure out exactly what each column is, but I, I can tell you a little bit. The one that's got this hazardous symbol here, that is basically the status, whether it is started the download, paused, or stopped. The arrows here that you see, these are started torrents. These two columns here with the curved arrows are the seeders and the leechers. The numbers here under the RX symbol, this is the number of the connected peers. And this column here with the sigma and the two up arrows looks like that is the total sum of the uploaded data. This column with the 2.2 gigs, 2.5 gigs, of course, is the size of the download, the total size. Of course, then we have the name of the ISOs we're downloading. And over here at the far right, we have the tracker. So that was just a really quick look at rtorrent and rtorrent-ps. rtorrent is really cool, terminal-based BitTorrent client that's pretty simple to configure and use. It's not complicated at all. Now before I go, I need to thank a few people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Libre, Quest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie, the producers of the show. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all the sponsors of the channel because this channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. That list of names, that is all my supporters over on Patreon. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You will find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.